welcome to Oscar Reads, the show where I read you books. And that's all I've got to say. Apart from, today's book is Postman Pat Goes Sailing. Letters for the island? said Pat. I thought there was nobody living there. There was nobody living there, said Mrs. Goggins. But there is now. I've always said it's a shame. That house standing empty. And such a lovely house too. I don't think I'd live to I don't think I'd like to live in the middle of a lake, said Pat. Even if it even if it is lovely. There'll be nobody to talk to when you're digging the garden. When did they move in? Yesterday, said Mrs. Goggins. It's a wonder you didn't see them. I was busy chasing bees, said Pat. They sent a big bull chop from Brookwood to get their furniture across. There was a right to do. Mr and Mrs Shackleton, said Pat, looking at the envelopes. I wonder if they get many letters. You'll have to practice your rowing, said Mrs Goggins. I don't think Jess is going to like having a boat trip every day, said Pat. Pat was on his way. When he came to the lake, he walked out onto the middle, the little jetty, where the boats tie up. There was a strong wind blowing. Pat held on to his hat, and he held on to Jess too. Tied, tied up to the ring was a small rowing boat, rocking up and down in the waves made by the wind. Seems a bit rough today, said Pat, but the post must get through. I'm sure Ted won't mind if I borrow his boat. So, here we go, Jess. The boat seemed very small. The waves seemed to be getting bigger. When Pat stepped onto the boat, the side he stood on dipped down and almost tipped the into the water. Oops, said Pat. Oh, help! Ouch! He tripped over an oar and tumbled into the bottom of the boat. He found quite a lot of cold water there. Then he scrambled onto the seat, and Jess curled up in the driest place he could find, in the very middle of the boat. Now that Pat was sitting in the middle of the seat, the boat balanced nicely. But then he said, Oh no! Because he had to stand up again to untie the boat. It, this was not easy. The boat wobbled and shook, and Jess thought he would have to swim for it at any moment. He wished he had stayed by Mrs. Goggins' warm fire. We could do a pair of life jackets, said Pat. Pat managed to get the rope off, and sat down again with a bump. Then he had to get the oars into place, and that meant more splashing. At last they were ready to go. Pat began to pull on the oars, heading out across the lake. It was hard work. He rowed hard for quite a time. Then he stopped to look round, to see how far away the island was now. Oh dear, we haven't gone far, said Pat. There was a long stretch of choppy water between Pat and the island, and the jetty still seemed quite near. The trouble with rowing, said Pat, is that you can't see where you're going. Jess thought there were many more things he didn't like about rowing. The wave that had just splashed him was one of them. The harder Pat rode, the harder the wind pushed him back to the jetty. When Pat stopped to rest or look round, the wind didn't rest. It just went on pushing. It'll be easier coming back, said Pat, with the wind behind us. After ten minutes of hard rowing, they were not even halfway to the island. Then Pat heard a shout coming from behind him. He was so surprised that he almost fell out of the boat. It was Ted Glenn. He was out in his sailing boat. Ted went whizzing past at speed. My goodness, said Pat, that's better than rowing. Ted went past so fast that Pat only heard part of what he was saying. It sounded like, Hi Pat, where you trying? I'll just hang on. Ted couldn't stop because the wind that was pushing Pat back was filling Ted's sails and pushing him along so fast 
that Ted was soon far away across the lake, and going round behind the island. Well, that was a short visit, said Pat, and all this time Pat was being blown back to the jetty. Then Ted appeared again round the island, and seemed to be zigzagging back towards Pat and Jess. He had rolled off some of his sails, so he was going more slowly now. Go back to the jetty, Ted shouted, and I'll fetch you a life jacket. Pat didn't need telling twice. He was glad to turn round and row with the help of the wind. He was soon at the jetty. Ted sailed up the pat. Where are you trying to get to? He said. I've got some letters for the island, said Pat. You'll never row there in this wind, said Ted. You'd best come in my boat. I'll have you there in no time at all. Pat tied up the rowing boat and climbed into Ted's boat with Jess tucked on into his jacket. Pat had never been in a sailing boat before, and Ted hadn't done any sailing for over a year, as he had been busy mending and painting the boat. Pat sat down in the middle of the boat, as far away from the water as he could get. Now then, said Ted, it's no good sitting there. You'll have to sit out. Sit out, said Pat. Whatever do you mean? You can't sit out of a boat. I thought we were coming in it. It's not the same in a sailing boat, said Ted. You see, you have to balance it. You ha you sit on the side, then when it tips over, you lean out the other side to balance it. It'll sink if you don't. But I'll fall in the water if I lean out, said Pat. No, you won't, said Ted. Just tuck your feet under the into these straps. They'll hold. They'll hold you. You'll soon get the hang of it. Said Pat. Hold tight, said Ted. We're off. They were. Ted had to put up the sails and loosen the strap and the rope. The wind filled the sails and they skimmed across the water. In a minute, the jetty was far away. The boat leaned farther and farther over as the wind pushed on the sails. Ted leaned right out of the boat, almost touching the water. Sit out, Pat! He shouted, Father! Pat copied Ted. He held on to a rope for dear life and sat far out of the boat. The water looked very cold. He didn't want to boat he didn't want the boat to tip over, and it felt as he would it would do at any moment. So Pat leaned out much farther than he really dared. Can you swim? shouted Ted. Not very well, said Pat. But Ted was busy so busy with the boat and didn't seem to hear. We're going about, shouted Ted. Get ready. What? said Pat. No, shouted Ted. Move. Where? said Pat. Oh! Get your head down, Ted yelled. Suddenly the boat swung round so that the wind came from the other side. The sail came swinging across, just missing Pat's head as he ducked down. The boat tipped over over the, the other way. Now, Ted scrambled across to the other side of the boat, and Pat followed him. They leaned out to balance it again, and it whizzed across the water, bouncing through the waves and making waves of its own. In this way, they went in zigzag lines across the lake. The island was far behind them now. Uh, Ted, I wanted to get to the island with these letters. We seem to have gone a long way past it, said Pat. It's called Tackett said Ted. I think you I think we've dropped a few stitches, said Pat. No, it's because of the wind, said Ted. It depends on the way the wind's blowing. Ready to go about? No! You can't sail the opposite way to the wind, so you have to go in zigzags till you're where you want to be. Ready? We're going about. They went zigzagging about the lake in this way for some time. At times, the island was quite near. At others, they couldn't even see it. When they were near it, Ted said the wind wasn't right, and they'd not be able to land this time round. Lovely day for a sail, said Ted. Yes, said Pat, but I've got these letters to deliver, and I should be getting on. Oh, we'll make it next time round, said Ted. But they didn't. Let's try once more, said Ted. 
They missed it again, but passed near enough to wave to Mr. and Mrs. Shackleton, who were standing on the island's jetty, watching them. You could put the letters in a bottle and float them across, said Ted, laughing. When they missed yet again, Ted said, It's no good. That wind's not right. We'll have to put ashore. Tell you what, Pat, we'll need to visit the Dr. Gilbertson's place and see if she can get her old motorboat out. That should do the trick. Ted landed at the jetty and tied the boat up safely. Pat was glad to be on land again. He felt very odd. It felt strange to be walking on something that didn't tip from side to side. As he walked along the jetty, he zigzagged as much as the boat had done on the water. You've got your sea legs now, said Ted. It took Pat a long time to learn how to walk in a straight line again. It's a lucky thing you can drive in a straight line, said Ted, as they went on their way to Dr. Gilbertson's. The doctor was glad to see them, as Pat had a lot of letters for her, and a parcel. Pat, was that you I saw? said Dr. Gilbertson, out rowing in on the lake. I got my binoculars out, and it looked very much like you, but I said to Peter that it can't be Pat, because he'll be busy with his letters at this time of day. Pat told her about his struggles to the get to the island with the letters for the new people, and Ted asked her about the motorboat. You're welcome to borrow it if you can get it to go, said Dr. Gilbertson. I can't remember when I last had it out. Better still, I'll come with you. They're sure to need a doctor on that island one of these days, so it'll be a good practice. Oh, and I must give the Reverend a ring. He loves boats. I'm sure he'd like to come. At the end of Dr. Gilberton's garden was the lake, and on the edge of the water was the old boathouse. What an odd house it was! There was a dry door at the garden end for people, and there was a wet door at the lake end for the boat. There was a little jetty inside where the boat was tied up. It was a good thing they had Ted there. It was such a long time since the boat had been out that the engine didn't want to start. Ted asked for an old towel, then for a paper clip. He opened hatches, turned knobs, tightened up screws, and pulled harder on the hand starter. In the end, they had to borrow the battery from Pat's van. The engine started with a bang and a puff of blue smoke, churning up the water in the boathouse and making the boat pull hard on its ropes. We're off, said Ted. All aboard! The Reverend Tim survived just in time. What a wonderful chance to call on our new neighbours, he said. I must welcome them to our little church. Off they all went, across the lake to the island. Dr. Gilverson steered, and Ted kept an eye on the engine. The Reverend Tim sang a stirring hymn about the sea. This is fun, said Dr. Gilberson. I shall take up boating again. Remind me to get you a battery, said Ted. I like your boat, said Pat. There are two things about it. One, we can sit in it instead of sitting out of it. Two, it goes in a straight line instead of making these stitches that you have to do in a sailing boat. Tacking, said Ted. There's nothing like sailing. What has sewing got to do with boat? said Dr. Gilbertson. But they arrived at the island, so no one had time to answer her. The Shackletons were waiting on their jetty. They were very glad to see them. Welcome to the island, said Mr. Shackleton. I'm afraid I'm afraid it's rather invasion, said the Reverend Timms. Oh, not a bit of it, said Mrs. Shackleton. Go and have some tea. We've had the kettle on for ages. We thought you'd never make it. It's, it is a bit rough today. They had tea and sandwiches and cakes. They were delicious. Pat delivered his letters and the Reverend Timms put the Shackleton's names down for the choir the pet show, and the coach trip to Blackpool. Ted spotted a clock that needed mending, and Dr. Gilbertson gave them a card with her telephone number on it, just in case. I'll have to be getting on with my letters, said Pat. Call again, said Mrs. Shackleton, but don't worry, Pat, about having to set sail with our letters every day. We'll come over and collect them for Mrs. Goggins from now on. Thanks, said Pat. It'll save me from getting my feet wet. And all that tacking, said Ted. I'll have to tack up the valley with these letters, said Pat.